Okay, let's take a look at 7.2, looking at addition and subtraction formulas. So, I've written these formulas out. So, I have a formula for if I have a sine of an addition or a subtraction or a cosine of an addition or a subtraction. So, we're not going to actually show um, why these formulas are true. We're just going to kind of accept that these are the case. Now, actually, Again, these look a little ugly, but there's a pattern with these guys. So why would we need a formula like this? Well, I'm looking at example number one here. So my goal is going to be to find the value of something like sine of 15 degrees. So the thing is, well, 15 degrees is not a known angle. However, well, I can write 15 degrees as a sum or difference of known angles. Like, let's see, the angles I know values for 30, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. So I actually have a few options for how I write this guy out. I'm going to choose. I mean, I'll get the same answer no matter what values I choose, assuming I do everything correctly. So one idea would be to write... 15 degrees as 60 degrees minus 45 degrees. I mean, what else could I have done? I could have written it as 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. I mean, there are even more options. What else could I have done? Uh, I guess I could have done negative 45 degrees plus 60 degrees well actually you know that'd be the same as this but i mean lots of different ways that i could write out 15 degrees as a sum or difference of known angles i just have to pick one and go with it so i'll go with this set that i chose here Okay, so then let's see which formula I'm going to apply. I'm going to apply, this is the sign of a difference. That's this formula. Okay, so how does that formula work? It's sine of the first, cosine of the second, and then you see how I have a minus here matches with a minus here? So because I have the minus here, I'm going to do minus here, and then it's vice versa. So sine of the second, cosine of the first. Okay, and then I can just go ahead and fill in all those values. Like I have four bubbles here, right? I have to evaluate each of these quantities. So sine of 60 degrees, let's see, root 3 over 2. Cosine of 45, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2 and a half. So root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4. So I already have a common denominator there. So root 6 minus root 2 over 4. And so I have found the value of sine of 15 degrees, and it's pretty easy. Okay, cosine of 195 degrees. All right, so again, I have to make a choice. I have, I have some options as far as how I write 195 degrees. That's a big angle, so maybe I want to think over here. What is this, 90, 120, and then 90 plus 45, 135, and then what is that one, 150 degrees? Okay, so how do I want to write 195 degrees? I guess I could do 150 plus 45, That's another idea. I guess I could do 135 uh, plus 60. Okay. Um, what else could I do? Well, let's stick with those for now. I mean, we can come up with more. So what, which one do I want to go with? It doesn't matter. I don't know. I'll do 150 degrees plus 45 degrees. 
Okay. So then which formula am I going to be using? I have cosine of a sum. It's that formula. So actually, I think the cosine formulas are even easier to remember. So the way this works, it's cosine of the first, cosine of the second. Now, the thing you'll notice with the cosine formula, see how it's plus here? It's going to be minus here. It's the opposite sign in the middle. So in other words, see how it's plus here? This guy's opposite in sign. Then I just put both signs, though. Sine of 150 degrees, sine of 45 degrees. Okay, and then I just fill all of these in. Okay, let me see. So I'm looking back up here. Here's 150 degrees. So let's see. The cosine would be negative root 3 over 2. So, Oops, cosine of 45, root 2 over 2, 1 half, and root 2 over 2. Okay. And so what about something with tangent? So... Notice here I didn't put a formula here for tangent, but that's because <clears throat> tangent I can actually write using the formulas that I already have. I mean, I don't need to memorize any additional formulas because I know the definition of tangent is sine over cosine. So what if I just find both of these values and then, you know, I go from there? So should I do this part maybe below here? Let's start with that one. And then we'll go back up here and we'll fill this guy in, right? Okay, so this time I'm working in radians. So again, I'm thinking, you know, about my circle. But now I'm thinking, okay, angles I know in radians. Pi six, pi fourths pi thirds, two pi thirds, three pi fourths, five pi sixths. So let me look at seven pi twelfths for a second. So I'm going to think of breaking that up as, say, a sum. I mean, okay, so seven is six plus one, but then, okay, six twelfths, I'm going to know the values for that one, but I'm going to be stuck with Pi 12s, I don't know the values for that one. So what's another way I can break up 7 12s? I don't know. 5 plus 2, does that one work? Okay, this one is pi 6. I know the values for that one, but I'd be stuck again on that one. Oh, what's another idea for 7 pi 12s? What about 3 12s and 4 12s then? Does that one work? So that's one fourth plus one third. Oh, look at that. So seven pi twelfths can be written as pi fourths plus pi thirds. And those are both angles that I know the values for. So that's going to be the set I'm going to choose up here, say. So I'm going to say this is sine of pi fourths plus pi thirds. And then I'm applying my formula or sine of s plus t, which was uh, here, right? Okay, so how did this one work? Where are we? We're here, right? So that formula said sine of the first, cosine of the second, and then plus here, match plus here. And then vice versa, sine of the second, cosine of the first. OK, 
Okay, so what are these? Root two over two, one half. Root three over two, root two over two. Root two plus root six over four. Okay, so that was sine of seven pi 12. So should I go back up here and put that into our tangent? So what was that? That was, let's see root two plus root six over four. Okay, now I still have to find the one for cosine. So I need to continue down here. So now I'm gonna find cosine of seven pi twelfths. So again, I already found the values that I can break 7 pi twelfths into, pi fourths plus pi thirds, right? So now I'm using the formula for cosine s plus t. So where was that one? That's this one, right? Bring some of this up here. All right, so again, I think the cosine sum and difference formulas are actually easier to remember than the sine ones. Well, I don't think any of them are really too hard, but let's see. So I go, okay, cosine of the first, cosine of the second, and then I have to remember if it's plus here, it's the opposite. Then other than that, I just put both signs. Can I squeeze this in? and then I go ahead and I just evaluate these. Fill in my four bubbles. So root two over two, one half, two over two, root three over two. Okay, so there's my value for cosine seven pi twelfths. Root 2 minus root 6 over 4. So back up here. And then I'm going to have to simplify this guy. And then we'll multiply, say, by 4 over 4. I can cancel these, right? Like so. Okay, now what we typically do here is we say multiply by the conjugate. Now we've worked with conjugates before, but we worked with them um, when we had just one radical. So the difference with this guy is, see how in the denominator I actually have a difference of radicals? So the conjugate, I'm looking at the denominator. So should I say conjugate of denominator? So what I'm gonna do there, I'm looking at the denominator. Its conjugate is gonna be the same expression with the opposite sign in the middle. So like so. Okay. So now, the reason, you'll see why this is gonna work. Okay, because you see in the bottom what I actually have here, I actually have a difference of squares. I have an a minus b times an a plus b. So watch what happens when I do my FOIL on the bottom. Okay, so I'm FOILing, so should I clean this up again? Get rid of this circle. Make 
this match, so I'm gonna do a foil. So I have root two times root two, two. Root two times root six. Okay, so look, I have my two, then I have plus root 12, right? And then look here, I have minus root 12. And then my last one is minus six. So you see how these cancel, right? So isn't this just two minus six? That's why this works, because I have that difference in squares and those middle terms there actually cancel out. Okay, so my numerator, I have a foil again. This one, I don't get the cancellation, but let's see, I have a two. I have a root 12 plus another root 12. So I'll, this time I have two roots of 12. And then plus a six. That last one, did you catch that? Okay, so what the heck do I have then? An eight plus two roots of 12 over negative four. So I'm almost there. Let's see, 12 is four times three. So let's see, what is this? This is two, two times two times root of three. So eight plus four roots of three over negative four. So that's eight over negative four plus four root three over negative four. That's because this guy's dividing both of these quantities in the numerator, right? And so I finally come up with a value. So there's my, oops, this one, there's my final answer for tangent of seven pi twelves. And so that one's a little longer, but it's good practice. It illustrates this trick um, nicely here, where I multiply by the conjugate. That's a useful trick. We're gonna use that in a couple other contexts as well. Okay, how about a couple of identities? So actually, I think the identities in this section are easier than the identities we looked at in 7.1 because the thing is with something like this, as soon as I see this left side, there's only one thing I can really do. I mean, what I see there, I say, okay, well, I don't have a formula for cosecant but I do have a formula, i to make that look nice, for sine. So I know cosecant is one over sine, but then once I get here, I mean, there's no creativity with these, as in like, can pretty much always tell what you're gonna have to do, which is, well, I'm gonna have to use a formula for sine of S minus T, right? So I'll let you refer back up to that one. So how does that one look? That one's sine of the first, cosine of the second, and then with the sine formula, minus matches minus, and then it's vice versa. So sine of the second, cosine of the first. I'm just gonna try to make this nicer like that okay and then I go ahead and I evaluate so fill all these in okay this one is a variable cosine of u will stay sine of u will stay okay pi halves is here so what is sine? Sine is one, right? Cosine is zero. 
Oh, this is easy because look, zero times sine of u is zero. So the only thing left in the denominator is cosine of u. So isn't that the definition of secant of u and wasn't that the right hand side? So I'm done. All right, what about one more? So with this guy, I mean, I kind of think in this case, I would start with the right-hand side because the right-hand side, I actually see that difference as in I see this is tangent of S minus T, right? So I know like in that previous example, what I could do to start out with is I could start by writing that sine of x minus pi fourths over cosine of x minus pi fourths. Okay, now I'm going to use my formula. So what is this one? This is a sine of s minus t. This is a cosine of s minus t. Okay, so how does this work? Sine of the first, cosine of the second, minus, vice versa. Sine of the second, cosine of the first. Okay, the cosine formula, it's both cosines. Opposite sine in the middle, and then both sines. Looking at the top. And the bottom. Okay, cosine pi force, root two over two, sine pi force the same. So I don't know, should I rearrange? Let's see, I have root two over two times sine of x minus root two over two times cosine of x. Cosine of x, actually, let me write that. Root two over two in the front. the top and I take that GCF out, then wouldn't I have a sine of x plus a cosine of x? Okay, and then in the bottom, take that root 2 over 2 out. Then I can actually cancel those. All right, so we're getting there sine of x plus cosine of x. Oops, made a small mistake here. Do you see it? This minus, here should be a minus. Let me just go back. This guy should be a minus. Make sure you fix that in your notes. Okay, so once I cancel my root two over twos, it's sine x minus cosine x. 
over cosine x plus sine of x. All right, so if I'm looking back up here, so remember this is my goal, the left-hand side. I need to write this in terms of tangent. So I have a couple ideas. So what have I done so far? What I've done so far is I've taken the right-hand side and I've made the right-hand side look like so. So what if what I do now is I take the left-hand side? So I take this guy and I manipulate it. Now I'm not going to move things from side to side. I'm not allowed to do that. But what if, oops, what if I take the left-hand side and I work with it on its own? So what was the left-hand side? It was tan x minus one over tan x plus one. So what would I do with that? I think maybe I would try writing tangent as sine over cosine. And then I think I would try an LCD. So I'd multiply this top and bottom by cosine x over cosine x. Distribute, right? Then I'd have sine x minus cosine x. Bottom, I'd have what? Um, sine x plus cosine x. All right, so look at this. Isn't this the same as this? So what have I shown here? I've shown that the right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side. So indeed, I have proven that identity. 